te use technology a lot. And at UMass Lowell in the States, we have been teaching online classes. These are classes which are taught completely online. And eventually, some of you may be able to take some of these classes because we, I have students, I just checked, we start classes next week, and I just checked I have 35 students, but five of those 35 are from different parts of the world. So while I'm sleeping, they're typing away their homework to me. Uh, I have interests in quality management, especially currently in the educational delivery systems. By that I mean, how is it best to teach students to get them so that you really learn the best? And one of the ways not to do it, in my opinion, is simply for the instructor to talk to the students all the time. One slide a little bit about UMass Lowell because I understand that you'll be having some of my, the, there'll be a conference here in January where I'll be some of uh, my boss, my dean, and provost will be coming. Um, and uh, we are in the beginning process of building a relationship between our university and our, the university there. Um, we have seven different concentrations in business, and I think most of you are first or second year students, is that correct? First year students, okay. So you're not too much too concerned about the MBA, or I mean the PhD or the Masters yet, but there may be an opportunity in another year or so that some of you can go and study in Massachusetts, which is where Boston is. It gets cold there. That's the only thing that's, that's not really good about that area in the country. And we're excited because just as you are growing significantly here, our campus is growing as well, and we're supposed to have a new building in another year. My major topic today is to, I understand that we have a mix of interests. Some of you are in hospitality, some of you IT, um, other areas, management in general, um, is that I think you all know already that there are very big differences about how people perceive the world. And you, no matter what your jobs are going to be, you're going to be working with people from very diverse backgrounds. In some, play, in some ways in India, you have an advantage because you have very diverse backgrounds here already. But for students that I teach in the States, many times they don't really have a perspective about how cultural differences can impact how well they can do their jobs. And so I want to talk a little bit about some of these things today. I'm going to write on, if you find that you like these slides and you want to see a copy of them later on, I'll write my email here. And if you'd like to write an email to me, I won't be back in the States until next week. But if you write me an email, I'll be happy to send you the slides that you're seeing today if there's of any interest to them. One of the things we need to talk about is when we're talking about culture is there's difference between national culture and organizational culture. Different businesses have a, do you know what I mean about the culture of an organization? Uh, can I get anybody to, can I pick on anybody to ask your opinion? Is that okay? Well, you guys in the first row, whenever you're in the first row, I can't pick on you because that means you're, that's further to the front than students like to sit. So I'll go to the, the back row. <laughs> what is, or you know what I mean by organizational culture? Um, say you worked with um, IBM. IBM is a company which is fairly, is very, has a culture of people getting dressed up very formal all the time. Another company, which I think you've all heard of, is Google. What does Google do? Search engines. Search engines, OK. Well, if you go to Google, you'll find people that are dressed in jeans. They'll be dressed. They'll have uh, little places to play ping pong or table tennis. It's a very different environment for learning or for doing work. So organizational cultures 
are as important as societal cultures. A lot of what I will be mentioning today is talking about societal culture and how this differs from place to place. But there's also we have to keep in mind the organization because many organizations go across borders. So you have should learn about when you work with an organization, the organizational culture and see if that is in line with what you're comfortable with. In general, what I will say is whenever you find a place where there is a discomfort, something you're unused to, you're going to find it more difficult or be more aware of in learning. Um, some ideas, some examples about how uh, the way people view the world. Um, I'm not going to go over all these. One of these examples in the U.S. is that people get rewarded short term based on short term performance. Okay, so it depends on what you do today, what your rewards are. An alternative approach, which is most often exemplified by the Far East or Japan, is that life work employment is for a lifetime. That your your at least traditionally people who have worked in Japan have had life guaranteed lifetime employment. I don't know where India stands in the middle. I'm going to guess more at this at this stage down here, probably in the private sector. Yeah. Yeah. So this has an impact on how people are promoted, for example. In Japan, you don't promote somebody based on their short-term performance. You have to wait your turn for performance, as an example. 